What's happening, people? And welcome to a new episode of the Rambling Dad podcast. Last night, we had UFC Vegas 82, Brendan Allen versus Paul Craig. So let's do a little recap of the card. First off, what's happening, folks? Happy Sunday. Hope everyone's having a good day so far. I've just been chilling. I uh, done a lot of housework this morning, some chores, you know what I mean, as, as the old dad duties go. And then uh, took the dog for a walk, came back, cup of tea, some lunch, and now I'm jumping on here to talk some fights for you guys. So, bit of a mad one, wasn't it? You know what I mean? It was like, first rounds were all like slow and a lot of grappling and some bits and bobs were going on, but nothing too exciting. Then all of a sudden, it was second and third round finishes all the way through the night. It was it was mental. It was like a really weird card to uh, sit and experience, to be honest. The whole vibe of it just felt mad all night, but we had some wicked finishes. So let's not dilly-dally too much longer. You're here to hear about the card. You're here to talk about it. Let's get into it. Let's jump on over to the screen. Right, so here we go, folks. Alan versus Craig. Unfortunately, Paul Craig got beaten. You know what I mean? In the third round, too, made it all the way to the third round. Brendan Allen's striking was very, very crisp throughout this fight. He'd done really, really well. <clears throat> he was landing the heavier, more powerful shots. Paul just didn't seem to really find his comfort, his pace, or anything with his striking. Um, but he went down to the ground quite a lot. He got rocked a couple of times. And when it went down to the ground, it was quite a technical bout, to be fair. You know what I mean? They were kind of scrambling. They were transitioning. They were rolling around with each other quite a lot, going for submissions. Paul obviously tried to go for his signature move, the triangle. Uh, never got it secured, never managed to land it in there at all. Um, Brendan Allen worked really well, stayed in his guard, was like, landing heavy elbows, landing some really good strikes. And, you know what I mean? Like, you can't knock Brendan Allen's performance. He, he was absolutely wicked last night. So, what does this mean for both men? Obviously, that was Paul Craig's second middleweight fight. He was ranked 13th. I don't know if they're going to move him down at all. Maybe not. They'll maybe keep him where he is and then look at matching him up with somebody else. But Brendan Allen, obviously, let's have a little look at the man himself. Or should we head on over to the rankings? That might be a little bit better. So we're heading on over to the rankings. I think he was ranked third before we went into this fight. Anyway, let's have a little look. Maybe not. I'm chatting. Bear bubbles me. Ranked 10th. What am I on about? So yeah, ranked 10th in that one. Beat the 13. I don't think he's going to move forward any. If he does, maybe one. Maybe he'll take him past um, Jack Hermanson. But what's going to be next for Brendan Allen? Obviously, he's going to want to make his way towards uh, towards a title fight. I know Roman Dawidzi's just had a fight announced. January Kaunir is out. I mean, the middleweight division is a bit tough for matchups at the moment. We've got uh, Sean Strickland versus Drickus Duplessis early in 2024. Uh, Robert Whitaker's there. You know what I mean, Marvin Fattori, that, that could be a fight that he could look at. Um, Hamza has obviously just fought. He probably won't be fighting again for another 12 months because that's what he seems to body do. You know what I mean? But... There's not much movement going on in the middleweight division right now. It's a bit flat. It's a bit funky. Like, I, I, I really I don't know where he can go with this one, how long he'll be out, or maybe maybe they'll just see how things go. Powell Costa, you know what I mean? Once he's healed up, they might have a look at getting Powell Costa versus Brendan Allen, see if we can get him up towards that top five of the rankings. But, yeah, tough one. It's a, it's a tough division to match somebody up with right now. So, like I say, Brendan Allen, phenomenal work. Absolutely gutted. My man Paul Craig didn't get the, uh, get the win on this one. I thought when it went down to the ground, Paul done really, really well to defend and like not take too much damage. You know what I mean, he was uh, keeping him in the uh, in the guard and going for submissions, like I said. But unfortunately, Brendan Allen was the better man on the night. Striking was crisp. He was landing heavy punches. You know what I mean? There was some power in those shots. And like I said, we've seen Paul Craig rocks a couple of times. So unfortunate, but I'm sure we'll see Paul come back again, hopefully, and get the uh, W next year sometime maybe maybe they'll still do that scotland card that i was hoping for in the in the uk and uh maybe march will be london and then july they might look at scotland maybe manchester any anywhere anywhere else but london because that's a long way for me to travel if i get something a little bit closer to home i'll be absolutely buzzing with that so the co-main event in the evening was michael morales and versus jake matthews mate i thought michael morales was going to get a ko first round second round how wrong was i jake matthews showing his experience, dragged it out for the three rounds, ended up going to a decision, which Michael Morales um, ended up taking. I think he I think he handedly won the first and second round. Of, well, not handedly, it was the 10-9, the 10-9 in, in my ranking, in my book. Um, but Jake Matthews 
put it on him in the third round and he, he was trying to get the finisher. I mean, it could it could have been a finisher any body moment from either of these men. Like I think I think both of them are landing some substantial shots throughout the fight. And that's what we were talking about on the watch along last night. I was like, mate, any one of these guys could actually knock each other the fuck out right now. So obviously that was uh that was a welterweight bout for for both of these men. If we head on over and have a little look at the welterweight rankings just now. It's probably going to have a little bit of a different layout than what we've seen from the middleweight. So obviously, we've got Colby Covington's about to fight Leon Edwards. We've got Gilbert Burns, Shaknov, uh, Shavkat, Ragmanov sitting there. You know what I mean? Stephen Thompson, one of the boys, not had a fight in a little while. But these both both of these men are probably wanting to try and get into the top 15 somewhere along the line. So we've got Fakradinov, we've got Michael Chiesa, Neil Magny, Kevin Holland, Jack Della, Madalena. I don't think Madalena or Ian Gary are going to fight below them. They're obviously going to try and move up the way. Uh, Fakradino is probably not going to want to try and fight Bowling. So it's, it's again, that's it's a bit of a tough one. So where are you going to put them? Who they're going to go against? But um, Michael Morales or Miles Morales, whatever you want to call him, because he does look like the guy out of Spider Man. Um, seems like he's going to be on a bit of a tear soon enough. Like he, he he done well in his first fight, had the KO in his first fight, ended up going to a decision in his second and his third. But that third fight there against Jake, Jake Matthews was far better than the second fight that we've seen him in. His performance was actually pretty wicked last night and he was unlucky not to get the finish. But like I say, they were both throwing with intention, so it was also unlucky for Jake Matthews not to get the finish. Have a little look over the stats. We had 84 total strikes for Michael Morales, 57 for Matthews. Um, both of them went for one takedown each, never secured it. We had 84 significant strikes at all 57. Is this the, doing this thing again where it doesn't seem to update and then it just like tells you the exact same stats on the uh, on the strikes? If anybody knows about that, let me know. Because it always seems to be the body same. Makes me look like an absolute idiot more than I already am. So before that one, we had Chase Hooper versus Jordan Levitt. This was an absolute banger, by the way. A technical delight to watch. Like, I really enjoyed this fight. I'd watch it again. You know what I mean? Chase Hooper getting the round one finish. Uh, choked Jordan Levitt, uh, Levitt out. But mate... It would have been good if he got up and twerked on him too, the young man, you know what I mean? But great great fight for Chase Hooper in, his, in the lightweight uh, division. He obviously, uh, he, he lost three fights, I think, um, at featherweight and decided, right, I, I'm going to move up. Um, three fights in a row. And now, obviously, he's gone on to beat Fior and now he's beat Levitt too uh, in the lightweight division. So it'll be cool to see who they match him up with next. Uh, his Brazilian jiu-jitsu is phenomenal, as we've seen last night. Same with Jordan Levitt. You know what I mean, the two guys, they did kind of start off striking. There wasn't many strikes thrown. But as soon as it went to the ground, mate, it was epic. It was just transitions to scrambles, to heel hooks, to any any kind of submission that they were going to try and go for, to taking the back, to back into mount and back into the guard. And uh, like if, if you understand the game and you, you enjoy um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu or grappling or the wrestling part of it, some people don't, you know what I mean? But if that's if that's part of the game that you enjoy, that was an absolute spectacle to watch. And I can't wait to go back and watch this fight again later on tonight or tomorrow whenever I get the time. But yeah, what a fight from Chase Hooper and Jordan Levitt, man. That was absolutely excellent. We had Peyton Talbot and Nick Aguirre. Obviously, Peyton Talbot making his debut after his uh, Dana White Contender Series win <clears throat> in the uh, Bantamweight division. And it ended up going to round three by submission. I think Peyton got the rear naked choke. It might have been to take his back rear naked choke, something like that. There was so many submissions last night. It was absolutely unbelievable. And I think it was the main card, except from that Michael Morales and Jake Matthews fight, which could have been finished, could have been a KO from either of the men. Every single one of them was a finish. Like the judges were just not getting brought into many of those fights last night. Um, it, it was incredible to see. Even on the watch along, we were sitting trying to buy it. Yeah. Uh, that one's a 10 9. That one's a 10 9 for this one. And then you get in, like I said, it was, it was mad because the first round was like slow, grappling, some striking going on, not too much. And then next minute, second and third rounds were just like, boom, fuck me, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what you want. But yeah, Peyton Talbot and Nick Aguirre, great fight between the two of them. Let's have a little look at the stats on this one 58 strikes uh, for Talbot, 18 for Nick Aguirre, 28 significant strikes, and uh, five for a you know what I mean? And then obviously we had no takedowns from Talbot, two takedowns out of 10 for Nick Aguirre. So that just goes to show Peyton Talbot's um, takedown defense. I think actually in the first round, Aguirre took him down and dominated most of that first round on the ground. It didn't seem like Talbot knew what to do, but when we came back into the second round, Talbot turned it back on him, had his back and was laying digs on him left, right and center where he could. And then obviously as we got into that third round, ended up going down to the ground again, probably a takedown from Nick Aguirre. Peyton ended up like reversing it, getting out of it somehow, a scramble, whatever it was. 
and then managed to get the submission and get the win on that one. So a great performance for Peyton Talbot's uh, debut there. Before that one, we had Luana Pinheiro versus Amanda Rebus. So obviously, performance of the night for the uh, for those girls, performance of the night for Brendan Allen as well. Well, I say performance of the night for those girls, performance of the night for Amanda Rebus. God damn! But at the same time, Luana Pinheiro was firing back as well. You know what I mean? So Pinheiro had 56 strikes and uh, Amanda Rebus had 96. We had 55 significant strikes from um, Pinheiro and then 87 significant strikes from Amanda Rebus. And the way that she finished that off, man, you know what I mean? She went to the body and then a spinning heel cut, a heel kick to the head, fucking caught her straight across the jaw, the temple, all of it. You know I mean, the whole face was like captured by that kick. And it was kind of like Jean-Claude Van Damme's kind of style of uh, backward spin kick. And when he holds the pose and he keeps his leg up in the air, that's the vibe that I got from that. But, mate, absolutely incredible performance for these, uh, for these women. Now, again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, man. A lot of people seem to hate on, the, uh, on women's MMA. And I don't get it. These girls are throwing down weekend in, weekend out, and they are performing absolutely amazingly. Right? And they just keep shutting people up, especially Amanda Rebus last night. I thought Pinheiro was going to get it. She was on an absolute... Let's go and have a look. Sorry, I can't remember what it was. Yeah, zero fight win streak. They've changed that pretty quick. I think she was on like a nine fight win streak or some shit. Right? Obviously, she'd, she'd only had, I think, three. Yeah, three in the UFC. Or was she on more than that? Was, no, Michael Morales is 15 fight win streak. He's now 16 fight win streak. She must have been nine, nine or 10 fight win streak, something like that. And she done absolutely incredible to get there. And then came up against Amanda Rivas that just stuck it on her and was just like, nah, not tonight. This is my show and I'm taking it. So great finish from Amanda Rivas. Like I say, spinning heel hook straight to the fucking jaw, dropping it down to the ground and finish it off with some nasty shots. Before that one, we had Urus Medic and we had, oh mate, I'm going to struggle with this one. Mike Tebek Orobi? Mike Tebek Orobi? Is that how you're saying it? I should have listened to the commentators last night, to be fair. Uh, but again, great fight. You know what I mean? Started off with grappling. Uh, Or Orobi is he, he he was kind of like echoing Khabib last night when he you know I mean the way the way that he was fighting, it was like that Sambo pressure wrestling style, take him down, wrap the legs up, punish him whilst he was there. Medic didn't really seem to know like look like he knew what to do with himself. He was getting tired in that first round, obviously, all the weight. Orobi looked pretty jacked, you know what I mean? He was a little stocky dude just sitting on top of him, and he could not get off the ground. He could not get away from him. And then, obviously, we got into the second round, and Orobi, right near the end of it, ended up securing the, the win by submission. Again, another choke. Uh, I actually said to the boys, do you reckon it's going to be a, a third-round finish here? Because he, he was threatening the choke like as the, uh, as the round was progressing in the second round. Obviously... Just as I say that, it must have been about 15 seconds later, boom, choke was in, and that was it, done. So a great, great main card. Like I say, every one of them could have been a finish. The only one that wasn't was Michael Morales, but, mate, what a card. I can say a weird one, but what a card. Like just, just because of the the first rounds just seemed to be grappling up against the cage, not much action in it, and the next minute, boom, they went off. So obviously, we need to give a shout-out, Jonathan Pierce and um, Joanderson Brito. Brito came out and absolutely, let's go and have a look at the strikes on this one, because I, I had Pierce winning this quite easily as well when you look at the strikes. You know I mean, I gave the, uh, the first round to Pierce, and the second round it seemed like he was getting it too, and then all of a sudden, boom, submission, ninja choke, flipped off the side of the cage, and I, mate, it was unbelievable. So we had 81 strikes for Pierce, we had 33 strikes for Brito, uh, one takedown out of four for Pierce, one out of one for, uh, for Brito, which uh, technically, I don't know if it was the one that got him to the ground to get the submission, but it was all he needed. Uh, sub attempts one boom done uh one reversal from pierce there 14 significant strikes for pierce and eight for brito but mate i wasn't even expecting it i thought it was going to go into the third round here like i honestly did and i thought right pierce is just going to work his way towards uh work his way towards a decision he's doing quite well with the striking um 84 of his strikes were landing you know what I mean? that's, a, that's a pretty decent start to be going through with a fight and then all of a sudden brito just went boom submission good night thank you very much shut up i'm taking that Adios, you know what I mean, and finished it off there. We also had uh, Chad and Helga, and uh, that's how we say it, and Helga versus uh, Jose Johnson. Jose Johnson obviously taking the submission win as well in round three, four minutes, 49, right near the end too. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, good fight between these two men uh, throughout. We had 47 strikes for uh, Chad, and then we had Jose Johnson with 141. You know what I mean, there was a big difference in the striking throughout that fight. Christian Leroy Duncan versus uh, Dennis Tullian. Mate, Christian Leroy Duncan was hitting this man with some powerful, powerful shots. The elbows were nasty. I've never seen one, two elbow before, and he landed a couple of them. You know what I mean? Like, 
like a jab, one, two, but he was going bop, bop with the elbows. And I was like, what the fuck, man? That was sick. And then obviously he came in, triple uppercut too, just hit him, buffed, 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 mate. Dennis uh, Tolian just was a bit outstruck in that fight. Just just by a tad, we had 90 total strikes for Christian Leroy Duncan, or CLD, as he likes to be called. And Tolian had 37. There was uh, 65 significant strikes for uh, Duncan. And then obviously 30 there, as you can see, and one knockdown uh, for Duncan as well. So a great uh, KO finish for Duncan in that fight. Uh, obviously coming off a loss as well. I think it did it was it in London that he lost his last fight. No, June 18th against Petrosian wasn't London, sorry. Chatting bollocks. Um, but yeah, lost his fight against Petrosian. So it was nice to see him get back in there and get that win back on the card. Mick Parkin versus Chow Machado. Obviously, Chow Machado making his debut as well after his uh, Dana White contender series win. And uh, it went the three rounds as some heavyweight bouts do, but these men were going backwards and forwards with it. It was a tough fight. You know I mean, it wasn't an easy one for Mick Parkin to walk away with, but Big Mick got it done, buzzing with that. You know I mean, I was supporting Mick last night. Uh, 69 strikes for Mick, 103 for Chow Machado, but the difference was the takedowns. Um, Mick had three takedowns and Machado had zero. Uh, obviously, he uh, Mick controlled a lot of it on the ground, was landing the strikes that he needed to on the ground. So he worked his way towards that decision victory. Um he was getting tired in that first round and Machado started coming alive a little bit and started landing some strikes. But I think the majority of these strikes came in the third round as well, to be honest with you. Um, he didn't manage to do much in the first and second because obviously, like I say, Mick done really well. His takedowns were smooth. He was in, he had him down. He'd done what he needed to do to get the victory. But Machado did not make it easy because in that third round, he came back to life a little bit and started throwing with some intent. But it was already too late. Mick Parkin had already uh, won the first two rounds and uh, Machado needed a finish in that third one if we wanted to get it. We had uh, Saragi versus Alexander. Uh, Saragi got the win on this one. I'm, I'm trying to think on, on the finish on this one. I actually can't remember. It was first round. It was pretty quick. How can I not remember this one? Uh, I think, it, I, uh, yeah, because I had Alexander on my card as well. Was it Was it the straight? Was it the straight right? Did you just drop him? Anyway, you got a KO. That's all that matters. You know what I mean? My memory's absolutely shot, but that's all that matters. We had Awen Perez and Lucy Pudelova, mate. This went to a decision as well. And uh, Pudelova put it on her a little bit as well. Like Perez's eye was fucking huge going into that second round. Like she, she landed a really good uh, shot in the first round. Puddleover obviously came back with 123 strikes to a total of 41 um, for Puddleover. Sorry, Perez came back. Um, two takedowns, and then she had 42 significant strikes to 20. And then once she got the victory, you know what she done. Everybody's seen it. It was all over Twitter. It was absolutely everywhere. Jumped up, feet on the cage, started doing an upside down twerk right in front of the commentator's desk as well. Yeah, I mean, so everybody's got that video now. It's flying around everywhere. And it's a solid way to promote your OnlyFans, I suppose. But I'm pretty sure she did say that there's nothing dirty on my OnlyFans yet. I mean, it's uh, there's no dirty content on there. But if you're going to be twerking like that, well, you might want to start putting some twerking videos up. Uh, so this one was a bit funny. I actually went upstairs and uh, helped get my daughter to bed on this one, but it ended up as a no contest. Somebody said, did he have him uh, head and arm triangle, was it? And then it looked like he was going out or he tapped or he didn't tap. They weren't sure what was happening. I think it was just a bad call from the ref. Um, and then obviously it got overturned to a no contest. I'm unfortunate on that one. Uh, the first fight of the night, Charles Johnson and Raphael Esteban. Free rounder and an absolute banger. Quite enjoyed this fight. It was back and forth. Uh, Raphael Esteban ended up taking it. We had 116 strikes for Charles Johnson against the 35 at Esteban. He had three takedowns, which obviously when he was on the ground, same as Mick Parkin, just done what he needed to do to get the job done. But they were back and forth at times. And then we had 72 significant strikes for Johnson and... 18 for Rafael Esteban. So Esteban took that win. And was that his first fight? I can't remember. And there was a couple of people that had um that had debuts last night. I was going to have a look. Yeah, that was. It was Esteban's debut as well. So wicked to get that win on his debut anyway. You know what I mean? But that was it, folks. That was, it was like I say, it was a funky card, but it was a really good card. I quite enjoyed it last night. And being on nice and early is always great when you're in the UK. I think it was finished up for about one, five past one, something like that. So that was a decent time rather than 6 a.m. You know I mean, I chilled out for a little bit longer and then I went to my bed. But 
Again, unfortunate for Craig, uh, Paul Craig. I, I was pretty gutted that he never got the win on that one. I was really hoping that he was going to go on a little bit of a tear throughout this middleweight. He's been training hard. He's working well. He's got his nutritionalist and uh, he's like hitting all the numbers and the, they're doing everything down to the T. And it was just unfortunate. So, uh, yeah, but massive shout out to Brendan Allen. Great performance. Like I say, powerful shots. Great on the ground. Staying, uh, staying in his guard, stacking his guard and then just making sure that he'd done the damage that he needed to do. So let's head back over to this screen now. Boom. So, yeah, great fights overall. We haven't got any UFC next weekend, but what I do have is Cage Warriors Newcastle. So I'm heading down there with my mate Sean. Uh, we'll be driving down on uh, Saturday morning. <clears throat> the uh, the door opening times are 5 o'clock. They recently changed to 3 o'clock, so we're going to set off at about 10. It takes about three hours to get down there. So we'll set off at 10. Should get there for, like, you know I mean, 1 o'clock, half 1, depending on traffic get something to eat, get into the, uh, get into the arena, sit down and have a fight, uh, have a night of fights. Yeah. You know I mean, we've got Chris Bongard in there. There's a couple of Scottish boys. We've also got Reese McEwen going for the vacant bantamweight title. I think there's two other title fights on the card as well. So it should be a banger and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, that's been the post fight podcast folks. I hope you've enjoyed the little recap there. Let me know what your thoughts were on the fights on the night as well. Like, like I said, it was a bit mad. So like the, uh, the grappling and stuff at the start, so what, what were your guys' thoughts on it? Did it feel a bit slow-paced to begin with and it was a bit funky getting second-round finishes all night? We only had four, maybe five decisions across the card. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, great card. And obviously, we, uh, we'll we be coming back the next time that we'll, uh, that we'll have a uh, UFC card will be... Uh, I can't remember now. Darush versus uh, Sari, you can, I believe, yeah. So that one should be pretty decent. I think that card's actually pretty stacked. So I'll jump on. I'll do another little uh, pre-fight podcast, maybe later on in the week or something. I'm going to try and line up some more interviews for some people. I've, uh, I've been a bit slow, a bit sloppy on my own content. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, dust up, shake down on Wednesday with the fight week show as always. Um, they will also have their prediction show. So make sure you go and check out the fight week show. Great content, great interviews. Go and give the boys a sub on uh, on YouTube. They're also on Twitch, Rumble, Facebook, everything. You also got Cage Scribe. Go and give my man Jordan uh, a sub as well. He's obviously just started his channel. I mentioned it in my last video. Uh, he's got a few interviews done already. I'm not sure what else he's going to be doing along the lines or if he does anything like this. Uh, I'm going to try and get him back on the show. Obviously, I've had him on before. I know he's reached out to me and seen if I wanted to jump on, so I'll probably jump on his show at some point. But yeah, the content's coming. It's going to be in the making. And uh, have a good week, everybody. And I will maybe do a little recap of the Cage Warriors card once I get back. But make sure you go and check me out. You can get me on Spotify and the Ramblin' Dad podcast. You can find me on the Body Good Show website. And obviously, get me on YouTube, which you might be watching me on already. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at MMA. If anybody wants to give me a follow on there, I'm usually trying to be funny. doesn't always land, do you know what I mean? Sometimes it does, but... I'm just there for a good time and just to chat and make some friends along the way. So, uh, yeah, and make sure, as I've said before, you go and check out my Instagram page. I'm just growing it, as I've said before as well. Um, but it'd be great if you can go on there, give me a little follow, because I just update it with thumbnails or video clips or whatever it is from the content that I make. I'll then cut some of it and I'll fire it on there as well. Sometimes I put my pics up on there and uh, obviously yeah, story posts, etc., etc. So, yeah, thanks for listening, folks. I've been your rambling dad. Peace. What's going on, people? Arnold Allen here. Make sure you subscribe to the Rambling Dad podcast. Keep up to date with all his MMA content, fight breakdowns, interviews, and all that stuff. Give him a follow. Give him a subscription. And, uh, yeah. Get over there.